Good morning, folks. Yesterday, we talked about an earthquake condition index rise up to moderately higher levels that would begin very quickly. About seven hours ago, a 6.6 .6 struck off the west coast of Canada. Yesterday, we also commented on the Great Lakes ice extent in our portion of the climate. Today, NASA's Earth Observatory adds a cherry to that Sunday. Not only did 2014 ice extent hit a high yearly mark not hit since the 70s, but as of late April, we're melting way too slowly. Still got a ton of ice left. We're double the other highest extents on the chart for this time of year, and triple most of them or more. I'd love to have been able to report this story back to you in 2011, back when a bunch of us were ridiculed for suggesting we could use our current infrastructures for monitoring space weather. Today, we learn that NASA is finally going to do just that geomagnetically induced currents monitored via the same infrastructure we'd be trying to save. Well played, paperclip. Gotta end on a better note than that when it comes to the article, so how about a new study that won't be in print for more than a month? Early release reveals the revelation that global ice coverage is driven by the sun. Coming to weather, a very strong system east of South America makes me want to check his convergence, but alas, where is it? Not discernible. Rather, the convergence drawing precipitation over the east coast is tied to a low south of Africa. That's a seriously long connection. To the left, we see the remnants of Cyclone Jack. No current tropical systems in progress, but we continue to watch north of Australia where a system has a moderate chance of getting a name if the Uyen factors increase today. Even if not, it's a significant rain event. In Europe, it will be an easier day. The North Atlantic low is more confined closer to Greenland. Meanwhile, the low over the Mediterranean will weaken today after drenching parts of southeastern Europe over the last 24 hours. Low in the Northeast Pacific, maddeningly close to that 6.6 .6 earthquake, eh? More rain comes with it. The bigger story and threat in the U.S. today is that same convergence line. Still in the central states now, but will swing east tonight, making for a night to check the local watches, warnings, and conditions. Also got heavy snow potential up north. In that southern watch zone, we could see lightning, hail, and possibly tornadoes. The universe gave us two gamma ray bursts over the last day. Interestingly, both came from the same constellation well north in the skies. Coming down one energy level to the X-ray flux, we see a great deal of solar quiet. Still. The sunspot number is less than half of what it was just less than a week ago, and we have little chance for upticks in solar flaring. The solar wind is relatively calm, but as we await a coronal hole stream, please note the one spot where density telemetry goes above the 10 proton line. If the speed ramps up today in yellow, that bump above in the density was the shock of the stream. Time will tell. NASA's Enlil spiral is showing a minor CME incoming to give a glancing blow to Earth on April 27th. It's nothing to worry about, but still, let's go find that eruption. Look beneath the central dark coronal hole where a filament destabilized and largely slid back into the sun, but clearly we do have some ejecta. The other concern today is the Earth-facing coronal hole. With Mercury conjoining the sun late tomorrow, our primary quake factor is in play here. Only of moderate power, unlike last time, but directly Earth-facing and combining with the planets for a medium-level warning at this time. That's why it was a 6.6 .6 in Canada and not one of those big 7-pointers. Finally, folks, this is our previous four uploads. Yesterday we uploaded two more videos after the news. They are both short and you can click to them right below this video. Very much recommended. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.